Growing up, um, you know, it's average childhood. You know, this, this whole Manson thing didn't occupy any of my time. It was 99.9% uh, .9 of my life was normal as anybody else's. And there's that one little tenth of a percent that, that things would, would come up. And everybody has that, really. I mean, everybody has a little something in their history that uh, they keep in the closet. Spent a lot of time in the woods and the water and not married. Kind of an average guy from up north. I served in 1986. I went to basic training and I spent most of my time in Germany. I've been management. I've been, uh, I've been self-employed. I was self-employed for a lot of years. We're, we're doing a lot of um, trying to be, be uh, self-sustaining. So I wouldn't call it farming, but, but um, planting and, and taking care of animals and that sort of thing. So my life's been easy. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, I make things easy. I don't get too upset about too many things. Things fell apart in California. I would have ended up in a foster system and Lord knows what could have happened there. But my grandparents took me in and treated me probably better than their own kids. And George and Elsie gave me what I needed to survive and thrive and made sure that I was doing the right thing. I think they, they wanted to, um, to get rid of the Manson name because of school and make me a little more normal, you know, so, so I wasn't being pestered or bullied or that sort of thing, which didn't happen very much. I would expect these, uh, these calls every Sunday from Mary, and of course that leads to questions, okay, that, that's my real mother, who's my real father, and, and, um, and they never, never would lie to me, they would, they would tell me, and I'd ask them to tell me about him. Oh, he's a, a crazy guy, and I don't think they, I don't think they lied. They, they, they told me what I needed to hear. Back in, I want to say, I was nine, so it would have been 1977, I believe. Um, I got a letter from him. Grandmother gave it to me and, and allowed me to read it, and I read it, and, and then I think she, she asked me to, to tear it up, or she said, why don't you just tear it up? And I think symbolically, that was, you know, something that she was pushing me to do. Well, after Charlie's passing, it turned out she had made a copy of that letter, and it was kind of in, in the family's hands, and I received it back after Charlie died. Charlie had a, a unique way of talking, and, um, and some of the way he was, some of the things he was saying would make it sound bad, but now as a 50-year-old versus a nine-year-old, I don't think he meant it that way, you know. For, uh, for instance, uh, he said, uh, your grandmother is a horse with large teeth, which, yeah, that doesn't sound like a very uh, flattering thing to say, but Charlie loved horses. Horses are strong, and she was a strong woman, and she had a bite. Everything you, that Charlie said that I've seen, you had to read into it a little bit. You had to think about what he was saying. You couldn't just... Uh, dismiss him as babbling because there's there's some truth into what he's saying in, in those babbles. Growing up I knew that my mother was was incarcerated. I knew it was for uh, a robbery and I guess that's uh, the long and short of it. I got to meet her I would guess nine or ten somewhere in that in that area. She would send things, um, she would make things. Um, I still have uh, a number of different uh, murals and, and different things you would make and send. So we're, we're closer than we've ever been, I would say. She lives for the day. She's, I mean, very active and enjoying life, enjoying retirement. People would ask questions and, and I knew so little. I never read Helter Skelter. I never read any books. I never saw any movies. I, I, I buried my head in the sand as far as that's concerned. It doesn't matter how deep you bury your head, you're gonna, you're gonna hear about Charles Manson. 50 years now, I see why people are still interested. The sex, the drugs, the, the fame, the notoriety. I think the public has been fed some untruths and this whole thing has been glorified and glamified and blown out of proportion and do we believe in 
brainwash zombies out killing people? I mean, is he 100% responsible for these crimes? This helter-skelter thing, just when you look into it deeply, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I believe the unanswered questions are, the big one is, why were these crimes committed? Um, I don't believe that there was an impending race war, or I don't believe Charlie believed there was an impending race war. Charlie saw some things while he was in prison. He was in prison with the Muslims and, and the Black Panthers, and, and I'm sure he heard a lot of rhetoric, but was he actually trying to start a race war? I don't think so. He, he uh, did a lot of petty crimes and did a lot of hard time for these petty crimes. In the, uh, the time that he got out, um, until it, this all happened, um, I think he probably really enjoyed himself, living free and a lot of girls around, good parties, he's playing his music. I don't think he would have thrown that away for silliness. Charlie's music is, is good, it's folky, it's fun to listen to. Garbage Dump is, <laughs> is a fun one, I don't know if you know any of these. Garbage Dump, oh Garbage Dump, why do they call you a Garbage Dump? <laughs> that sums it up in one big lump. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I do know a lot of the words. Charlie spent uh, a lot of his life being kind of a commodity, selling, they, they, they sold movies, they sold books, sell papers. Even in death, they, they were selling his ashes, they were selling videos of, the, of his body. I don't think that uh, a person in death should be exploited like that. He was embalmed, pictures for TMZ, for for a documentary. After he was cremated, the ashes have been sold and used in paintings and tattoos now, and really just kind of, a, to me, disrespected. What I think of Charlie now is, is uh, what happened was, was, was blown out of proportion. I believe he, he went through a, a lot in his lifetime before, during, and after these incidents. I think 95% of the, the public looks at Charlie as this, this mass murdering dog, and I, I don't believe that that's who he was. I've definitely come to greater peace with him. Um, I, uh, I don't have those, the, the negative feelings that I had at one time. I wish I would have given him a chance, yeah. Yeah, I, w I wish I, I, wish I would have um, at least got to know him a little bit, yeah.